think of a layout as a foundation of a house. It's one of the first things you lay down, and from there you use it to build up onto it. My name is Lisa, and welcome to Learn with Gem Pages. In today's video, we're going to learn to use row elements to structure clean and sleek page layouts, which also speeds up and improves your design time. You can use the timestamps listed to navigate this video. Let's dive right in. What makes a section? A page is a combination of different sections, such as a header, above the fold, below the fold, additional content, and a footer. They play different roles, but work together to nurture prospects into customers. Back to the earlier question, what makes a section? The process to create a section is simple. Step one, select a layout. Step two, add your content. A section is a combination of rows and columns with content inside sitting side by side makes a row. A row layout, or the number of columns in a row, is varied depending on how we want to present the information to customers. For instance, this vision and mission section is made with two columns. The image list in the process section is with three columns. And the meet our super team section has four. By clicking more settings, we can choose the number of columns and width of each column. The number is the proportion which always adds up to 12. For example, with the ratio of four to eight between two columns, the column width on the right is two times wider than on the left. Layouts of two column and four column sections. Now we're going to have a closer look at this two column content. Let's start on the left column. We have an image on the top. Follow up with a subheadline, a headline, a description, and end up with a call to action button. Moving on to the right column, we still have the same elements, but the image and the text content swap places for each other, which brings out a good contrast to the whole page. Now we're going to remove the content inside and you can see the layout clearer and which elements are being used to create such a beautiful design. It's just a row element with two columns. Inside each column, there's an image, a heading, and two block text elements. Now we're going to analyze this About Us section. You can pause the video for a moment and imagine the structure of this layout. The first part of the section is a row with text elements inside. The second part is a row with four columns. Inside each column, there's an image and two text blocks. After deleting the content, now we can see clearly what elements we need to use to build up the whole section. Build up sections on gem pages. Now we're going to create a whole section from the ground up. Do you remember our two-step process? First up is to create a layout. So we're going to drag and drop a row with a two column layout. Now we're dragging an image element and uploading the image. The next step is the text content. There'll be a heading element for the headline, block text elements for the subheadline, and the description. We're gonna add the content and redesign the content slightly with font weight, font size, and text color to make it stay true to your brand. Last but surely not least is a call to action button, which we're going to change the style of the text inside, then the color button, and the color when we hover over. Now we're going to add some space between the element to make them look more breathable. It looks pretty good with the first column already. Now we just need to duplicate the elements in the first column and then drag and drop them into the second column. We just need to replace them with the right content inside. All the styles of the text or button we've made earlier will be kept, which saves us tons of time 
instead of doing it over again. Under Dimension, when we enable Full Width, the content will stretch out full screen width. However, the function won't work with all types of sections, as it could look cluttered if we don't use it right. Then, it's a safe bet to stick with the standard 1200 pixels. As easy as it can be to over-design, it is important to avoid needless clutter. That's where Columns Gap comes into play. By holding down the option, we can adjust the paddings on both sides at once. That's all for today. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe as well as the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any future videos. Also, let us know what you want to see next in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!